Defy Noxus and taste your own blood. Good to see you again, old friend. We are the Vanguard. What we do is right in the King's name. I will fight as long as I stand. I bested the mountain. Now it's your turn. Huh? Welcome to League of Legends Actual Champion Spotlight, featuring Tarek, the Shield of Valoran. That glimmer of hope you see, that's me. That intro was the entire video, because I spent way too much time on it, so uh, so that that's uh, that's it. Bye, everybody. <laughs> God damn, it's been an entire year since we last talked about Tarek, and this rework has been talked about for so long, people forgot that the champ even existed. Fuck, I even forgot that the champ even existed, and now he's a buff-ass, Fabio-looking-ass, gem-loving man of a man that gives no fucks. He's the type of guy that would have sex with your girlfriend and then seduce you into letting him fuck you dry while having your girlfriend watch. That's some kinky shit. Say hello to my little gems. Riot said that they don't want to force people into playing champions in a certain playstyle, so they wanted to keep top lane Tarek still somewhat viable, so then you bring him top and you go up against the grave so you, you know you can't land your stun, and then you know you feed out your ass, but hey, you know what? You still fucking win the game, so what did we learn from that match? Uh, top, top lane Tarek is busted. See, Riot Games looking out for their players. You know, a lot of people say that Tarek is just, you know, too manly and that he's the straightest man in the world as an ironic joke, but I mean, come on. Come on, look at him. The gayest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, I swear to God, Tarek should have been the lead actor for Milk. But you know what? It's fine. I, I don't mind him being gay. In fact, I fucking love it. All the female characters that are, you know, slightly suggestive are what? You know, Vi and... Vi? Even there, she doesn't promote the gay culture, which makes Tarek, especially if you have the armor of the fifth age Tarek, which is the only Tarek skin you should have, he's possibly the gayest, most fabulous character in the game. And that's fine. That's great. Embrace it. Love it. Look at his poses. Look at his face. Look at his hair. There's nothing wrong with being gay. Just be gay. Embrace the gay. Be gay with Tarek. Be the gayest of gay with Tarek. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with kissing another guy if you just say no homo. There's nothing wrong with getting drunk at your first freshman college party with your best friend that you've always had secret feelings for and then go into a bathroom and accidentally kiss him where you then laugh it off as a joke but secretly enjoyed it and wonder sometimes if he enjoyed it also i mean that do that doesn't make me gay that was just an experiment everyone gets a couple experiments <laughs> i'm not gay you're fucking gay. With a huge rework that came in, not only making Tarek viable, but also making him a strong support, this guy just doesn't understand the meaning of the word no. Don't stun me. No. Don't hit me. No. Don't seduce me. No. Well, at least they kept his fucking leg warmer, so, you know, I guess, I guess that's cool. Tarek, Tarek... Tar Tarek, I'm just gonna say Tarek from now on. Fuck you guys. Tarek's passive is bravado. Whenever you cast an ability, your next two basic attacks gain 100% total attack speed and also deals magic damage that scales with your armor. Additionally, you also reduce the cooldown of your abilities with each hit. It's like old boy, except, you know, not really at all. Why do people watch my videos? So this is a pretty cool passive, and you would think that building attack speed on it might be pretty good, but really, it's it's, it's not. It's actually super awkward to try and get your passive to work with you during team fights. but in lane, the damage you deal off of this passive alone is super deceptive. I mean, you don't think that he does much damage when he walks up to hit you, but then you see your health go down, and it's like, Oh no! Your Q is Starlight's Touch. It's a heal for you and your allies that increases the longer you let it stack, with the max being three stacks. So you've got a basic pussy heal, and then you've got a huge-ass fucking heal that can scale with 60% of your AP and 4.5% of your bonus health. Letting the ability stack to 3 is the best, but sometimes you have to use it when it's only at one stack where the heal just doesn't really do much, but still it can help your teammates get out of a bad spot. Using this with your passive, the recharge time of your Starlight's Touch decreases whenever you use your auto attacks that trigger your passive, so you can get a stronger heal in a faster amount of time. Man, look at this guy. Add me to your friends list. I give good knock-knock jokes. You know, all right, you know, you know what, we'll, we'll give this guy a chance. If it's a good joke, then I'll add him. Knock, knock. Who's there? Magikarp used. Magikarp used who? Sploosh, splosh, splash.
Holy shit, that was worse than my jokes. So, so far, everything sounds pretty simple, right? But this is where everything just goes to shit. Your W is Bastion. You know, Bastion, like that one fucking character in Overwatch that always gets the play of the goddamn game. Bastion passively increases your armor, and when you cast it on an ally, they also get a passive increase in armor. Plus, they also receive a shield scaling with 8 to 12% of your max health for 2.5 seconds, as well as you do. I know it sounds a little confusing, but basically, you get a shield and your ally gets a shield. But then you've got the second part of Bastion, where whenever you're in range with your ally that you casted it on they also cast the same spell in their location you know you gotta just find you find a person that's your butt buddy you get your butt buddy you say hey butt buddy you want to butt you want to butt you want to you want to you want to you want to you, you want to have sex I'm not gay. This is what makes your E such a badass ability. Alone, you set up a small stun that pops after one second, stunning everything that it hits, scaling with 50% of your AP and 30% of your bonus armor. But when you have your butt buddy around when you cast your E, you then cast it from your ally's position as well, which is probably the coolest support spell that Riot's ever come up with. So if you cast your E, you get two separate stun lines that you and your ADC can align to lock down your enemy laners. And I love it. I love this fucking ability. I love the way that they changed it because before it was just, you know, the coolest thing you do is just, flash stun and it's like woo. but now when you flash stun it's like fuck i missed you think he's gonna stun in one direction but then the adc comes and you've got two separate areas that the stun is coming from which makes it really hard to dodge but you know at the same time it can also be super fucking hard to land because you have to have synergy with your adc whenever you try to use it to get off the stun because if you don't you both just look like a bunch of jackasses <laughs> But when you do have that synergy with your ADC, whoo, 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 oh man, you'll be stunning people from all direction and spit roasting them until they just learn to take it. Got a poem that I wrote about Tarek, right? <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue. Tarek doesn't like crying when he's going in with no lube. And the cool thing is that you don't have to be linked to one character for the entire game like Callista. You can change up who you want to be butt buddies with throughout the game by just using your W on other characters. There's a bunch of ways you can use this ability with your E, like putting it on Twitch and submarining their team into a stun, or putting it on your engaged champion to lock down the enemy team. But most of the time, it's best to just put it on your ADC and just peel for them so then they can get the most amount of damage off in team fights. But even if your ADC has the IQ of a newborn baby, that's that's fine because you've got your old cosmic radiance. See, Riot Games already knows that your ADC is probably batshit retarded and so they gave him this ult. After a 2.5 second delay, you give everyone on your team that's inside of the circle of cosmic radiance invulnerability for 2.5 seconds after it activates. But you know what? Tark ain't no bitch. Tark ain't no give no fucks. Tark ain't no paying for child support. When you have your W on someone, they also get a circle of cosmic radiance and can give the rest of your team invulnerability also. So it's basically a team wide kill ult, but you have to wait for the 2.5 second delay for it to activate and stay inside the circle when it does activate. There's so many invulnerability spells that are out there now, like Kindred Ult, Trindamir Ult, Kale Ult, and now Tarak Ult, so it can get pretty annoying going against Tarek, thinking you're about to kill the enemy team, but then he lays down his broken-ass fucking team-wide ult that makes you want to punch your monitor. And you know what? I swear to God, it's so hard to see what the fuck is going on in these games anymore. L okay, I mean, look at look at this. Can you honestly tell me what the fuck is going on right here? Or you know what? How about this? What about right here? The fuck is this shit? It's like a bunch of Crayolas got together and fucked each other. There's just so much information and particle effects with clumped up characters, you don't even know who the fuck is part of your team and who's on the enemy team. But yeah, this ult's great. You know, if you're gonna do Baron, you fucking ult, take no damage. If you're going into a team fight, fucking ult, take no damage. If you're fighting in lane, you ult, you fucking take no damage. And it's so good. It's such a good ult. And Altarga is a pretty good support, and he works really well in all kinds of team comps. You can use Kog'Maw and ult him to get a bunch of free damage off. You can use Lucian and completely dominate the laning phase. You can use Twitch and ult him so he can get off a full ulti. There's a bunch of different ways you can use Tarek, and along with his passive, his cooldowns are also pretty short. And that's, that's pretty much it, you know? Even though it's a rework, he's still a pretty simple champion. So, you know, there's actually really not much else I can say about the guy, so, uh... You know, it's times like these I listen to the wise words of our generation. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Lick on these nuts and suck the dick.
Get the fuck out after you're done And hop into my ride and make a quick run Bitches ain't shit Man, fuck these bitches So take the nuts And suck the dick Squeeze.